Thank you so much. Um, and I will go ahead and share my PowerPoint. And we'll give it just another minute. Welcome everyone to the Vet Tech Speaker Series. My name is Rebecca Newman. Again, I'll just give folks a couple of minutes to join since it's just 11 a.m. At, at this time. I will also mention to attendees, there's a Q&A button if you move your mouse towards the bottom of the screen, and that's a way for you to submit questions as we're in the session. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. We go ahead and get started. Um, I want to introduce a, a couple of people who are on my support team here because I do believe in teamwork and uh, we want to offer you the best experience today. So first of all, thank you to Mary Beth McKee for organizing this series. Um, I know I've gotten a lot out of it and I hope all of you have as well if you've had the chance to attend a previous session. If you haven't, um, please visit our uh, Vet Tech Speaker Series site, and you'll have access to recordings of our previous talks, which have ranged from background raising back backyard chickens to nutrition to what your vet office um, would like you to know. And here with me as my guest panelists, I have the uh, wonderful Dr. Virginia Corrigan who is the director of the Veterinary Technology Program here at App, App State. Um, and I have the wonderful Jamie Morgan, who is a fabulous instructor with our program. And she also teaches the um, hospice and palliative care uh, course in our curriculum. So I invited both of them to join us um, Dr. Corrigan has an extensive background in hospice and palliative care, as well as just a passion for senior animals, end of life care, and is just an amazing veterinarian. So um, I think, thank you, Mary Beth, for putting the link uh, to the speaker series in the chat. And finally, myself, my name is Rebecca Newman. I am actually the well-being coordinator for the veterinary technology program. Um, in addition, I am a uh, credentialed veterinary technician and specifically in North Carolina a reg and Colorado, uh, we are registered veterinary technicians. And today, I hope to share with you some of my knowledge on senior pets. And a lot of this comes actually from personal experience. I will bring in my education. Um, and quite a bit of that education has been through um, gaining certifications as opposed to what I learned in vet tech school. Um, because I didn't get to attend App State's vet tech program. Um, so I've taken a core, a certificate course in um, grief and loss companioning um, for pets. That was through Two Hearts Pet Loss. It's an amazing course where um, that anyone can take. Um, I've also learned from um, courses that are part of the University of Tennessee's veterinary social work program. And that is through Dr. Elizabeth Strand is just an amazing, amazing person who has, who coined the term uh, veterinary social worker. And um, I can't say enough amazing things about her. So my own personal interests, uh, professional interests have guided me and I hope to share some, um, some of this with you today. 
in as I'll share a little bit about um, the why, and actually let me pause to see if uh, Dr. Corrigan or Jamie would like to say anything as we get started. Or are we all, all good? You're doing a wonderful job, Rebecca. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for leading this. Thank you so much. Um, and so if there are, you know, medical questions or ideas, things that Dr. Corrigan or Jamie have to share, I invite them to jump in or when you all uh, put your questions in the Q&A, which I hope you will do, um, I may ask for them to answer them because I am not an expert on some of a lot of the medical conditions and some of the other things that we'll be discussing. So here on this screen, I want to introduce you to some of the reasons why this talk is just one of, of pure passion for me. Um, I live on a farm with my husband in Colorado. We have about 35 acres. We are both uh, credentialed veterinary technicians and we love animals. So that of course means we have a lot of them and they grow old or we adopt them when they are already at a senior stage of life, which I'll cover in just a moment. But you'll see Opal, our 19 year old barn cat who has uh, passed over the rainbow bridge. Jack's on the bottom right, uh, just a beautiful soul. And he left us about a year and a half ago. And then my, um, my heart dog, the canine love of my life, Moby, who is with us. And he is, um, he will be an example of many of the things that I talk about today. And he, he is in his Halloween outfit there. While I won't be touching on um, our larger animal um, animals, I do want to um, just say that I acknowledge that um, for many of us, our, our horses, our small ruminants, such as goats and sheep, can be just as much our pets, our children, as our dogs and cats. Um, I also want to dedicate this talk to our horse Gulliver, um, who uh, who passed over the Rainbow Bridge a couple of weeks ago. He's a gentle giant, protector of our farm. He taught me so much about just inclusion, kindness, tolerance, love, and um, I think he was a little over 30 years old. He's a Palomino Mustang and brought joy to everyone who met him. So when we talk about loving and caring for our senior pets, um, this applies to, to many different species. Um, DJ, our goat, is still with us, one of our six goats, and he is absolutely a pet. He was bottle fed and he's about 10 or 11 now, which is fairly old for a goat. He's a Nubian. And um, while in this first picture, he may seem like, oh, he looks pretty good. I did want to show you the, um, the kind of aerial view so that you get a little bit of a sense of his body condition. Um, and how that muscle wasting in in his um, back legs, um, that back part of his spine um, is kind of taking a toll. So a couple of pictures to, to get us started um, and to share with you kind of my why of, of being here today. Um, and what we'll cover today is some health considerations in terms of nutrition, exercise, and common diseases and conditions that you see in dogs and cats. We'll talk about some behavioral changes to keep an eye on, um, and as well as environmental modifications that you may already have done um, or that you can consider doing 
or your senior pet. Um, finally, we'll talk about emotional well-being, um, not just for your 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 pet, but for for you. Um, caring for a senior animal takes a lot out of us. It can be a beautiful, rewarding experience, and it comes with a lot of emotion. And I'd I'd really like to dive into that. So. Um, and then I have a few resources at the end. Um, a couple of things just to, to emphasize as we get, get into this talk is the importance of regular vet, uh, vet visits. Um, I can't stress that enough. Sometimes it's easy, especially if you're someone like me who has you know 20 some animals, it can and is already in in the field. It can be easy not to um, take each one to the vet or have the vet come out um, on a regular basis, and that um, that that leads to bad things, if I can say it bluntly. So take the time, spend the money on regular veterinary visits. Um, unfortunately, too many animals. The first time they see their vet in a few years is when the animal is euthanized. And it would be really nice to change that so that we can provide a, a really compassionate end of life uh, experience for both animals and, and us as owners. I also wanna emphasize that aging itself is not a disease. Um, we will talk about diseases, but aging is a part of life. Um, so that's where some of the awareness of behavioral change comes in, the environmental modifications and um, respecting the, um, the special needs of the senior pet. None of what I say is going to be one size fits all. Um, and that's also an important reason to keep up with your veterinarian and veterinary health care team. And we will have, uh, I'll leave plenty of time at the end for questions, uh, but I will also encourage you to put, put questions in the chat as we go along. So my case example for today, as I already mentioned, is my heart dog, Moby. And you'll see I have I adopted him when I was single before I ever had a farm family. And in this picture, I'm guessing he's about nine weeks old. He was a teeny little potato. Um, he's now a 14 and a half year old neutered male. And my best guess is she is a hound, perhaps terrier um, mix. He, his nose is his superpower. He loves um, following scents everywhere and anywhere. Um, concerns that I ha have today with Moby, um, some of the things that he is dealing with, the main one would be cognitive dysfunction. And um, I'll share more about this, but for example, last the night before last, I woke up in the middle of the night and he was barking in the garage, just bark, 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 bark. And it wasn't until I went out to the garage, found him, brought him back to the bedroom, helped him calm down, pet him, that he was able to go back to sleep. That is a very common, um, sign or behavior of a dog who is um, experiencing some uh, dementia, cognitive dysfunction, um, et cetera. Arthritis is a big thing for him, um, which I'll get into a little bit later. He does have a collapsing trachea, although it doesn't impact his quality of life right now. Um, and he has hearing loss. So moving on into a little bit about health considerations and nutrition. You um, 
please put feel free to put questions in the chat and I will take them to our resident expert in nutrition and wardenshire. Um, she is has her veterinary techni um, technology special her VTS, Veterinary Technology Specialist in Nutrition, and is just an amazing resource. What she said to me is, nutrition for senior pets, first of all, there are no actual senior pet guidelines um, that, that are currently used. So while there are plenty of recommendations, um, the World Small Animal Veterinary Association does not have, has not put out senior pet guidelines. She says here, another reason to consult with your veterinarian because it's so individualized. You know, some cats especially may need a lot more calories as, as they age. Some, some may need less. For dogs, Often we get concerned about obesity, and so we might want to feed them less. But again, it's really very individualized. Um, treats should be less than 10% of the daily caloric intake. And uh, basically, um, Anne said, feed a complete and balanced grain-inclusive diet preferably one that meets the Wasava guidelines, which she's spoken about previously. And the reason she says this is because these are the companies that actually do the research and do feeding trials. And those are listed here. Um, before I realized that I didn't define senior for you, and you may be wondering, well, what is a senior pet? And that actually varies depending on, on which resource you are using. The AVMA, American Veterinary Medical Association, um, usually says approximately seven years old How about for dogs and cats. However, um, other, other groups like the America, um, Associ American Association, uh, AHA, it's the Hospital Administrators Association, um, they might use something more like the um, a senior animal is one who is in the last 25% of their expected lifespan. So for a dog that you anticipate living for 10 years, that would be a, any dog that's seven and a half or older. Um, Again, it's, uh, I think that um, senior, we, we, we recognize senior often by outward changes, such as the gray muzzle in dogs, perhaps a slower moving cat, um, those, those types of things. Um, one thing, one more thing about nutrition before, before I move on is um, the importance of hydration. Now, it's it's always good with senior pets to, I would recommend keeping a notebook, whether it's online, on your computer, or a good old-fashioned paper and pencil notebook, and keep track of nutrition, exercise, behavior, um, because otherwise it's really easy to lose perspective. And one of the greatest gifts we can give our senior pets is information that we can then share with the veterinary healthcare team. So hydration, um, providing clean water, uh, and I would say, you know, be sure to clean out water bowls every day. Um, have multiple water bowls in easy to access locations. So for example, um, we have three dogs and we have three water bowls in our ranch style house. And we also have two water bowls in the garage. So that if, um, and let me say that our dogs have constant access to an outdoor run. So 
I want them to be able to access water as soon as they come in the doggy door from that run. Um, and if for any reason, one, one of them, like our senior dog, isn't able to make it back up into the house, I want him to have access to water, plenty of water and dog beds in the garage. Okay, exercise routines. I, um, I am not a, an exercise specialist, so I've kept it simple to movement is good um, unless otherwise indicated. And um, one of the things with senior pets that I am guessing many of you have experienced is that they we, we know they like to sleep more. And um, they seem so happy, just curled up in a ball in their in their doggy bed or their cat bed. Um, and we know that they have sore joints and you know arthritis is possible. That said, it's important that we help get them up and get them moving. No, they may not be able to do the same length of walks that they used to, but we can always break those walks up into shorter, um, shorter ones. So for example, with Moby, he a lot of his exercise, he goes out with the other two dogs um, into our run. He plays with them a lot inside on our non-slip carpets. Um, and I've made it a point more recently to take him on one-on-one -on -one walks. So they are not long walks, but we go outside, he's on the leash, and um, I'll take him to the pasture he, to see the sheep and the goats. Um, and I'll take him on a walk that is all his own, and he loves it. I also plan extra time into the walk. So we may not go far, but I, I give him the chance to smell anything he wants to smell because I know that that's one of the things he loves most in this world is lifting his nose to the sky to um, capture scents that are coming from, you know, a mile down the road um, or having his nose tracking something on the ground. And um, I'm able to help him get exercise through those small walks. Um, and it's an amazing source of well-being, both for him and myself. Um, so it also helps, you know, it helps oil up those joints and um, keep him from getting too stiff by staying sedentary all of the time. Okay, I said movement is good, but not this type of movement. And I have to laugh here because this is what Moby used to do when he was a youngster. Um, he loved to climb trees, and I am not a relaxed person when it comes to my fur babies. And I've always, um, would, I would get a little freaked out by it, but I not too freaked out to, uh, to stop and take a, take a picture of it. So be, you know, be wise in the type of exercise. And if you have any questions, it's a great question to take to your veterinarian and healthcare team. Okay, so I'd love to move into some common uh, diseases and conditions. I don't see any um, questions so far. And just checking a couple of things. Thank you, Mary Beth, for um, posting about Anne and her pet nutrition expertise. So, with dogs and cats, um, I decided to keep this pretty simple and um, ask for uh, Dr. Corrigan and Jamie's assistance if you have specific questions. Um, there are some very uh, 
you know, common diseases that impact both dogs and cats. Um, a big one, of course, is cancer, which can appear in many different forms. Um, heart disease, kidney disease, uh, osteoarthritis and degenerative joint disease. And then um, last but not least, I wanted to bring up oral and dental problems. Um, I'll talk about how to recognize some of these diseases in a moment, um, but I wanna just stop on the dental, dental one for a moment. Um, some of you may be hesitant as I have been to, um, to take my senior dog for regular, um, regular teeth cleanings. It's kind of scary uh, having a senior dog go under anesthesia, at least as a pet owner and mom, I, um, I experienced that. And I will say that um, I didn't keep up with Moby's dental care as much as I should have because of that fear. And it make, it doesn't make sense. I know the, the medicine, the, I trust the people who, who do the, the um, dental cleanings, the, uh, anest, um, the anesthetist, but something about putting Moby under anesthesia just was a fear of mine. And so I invite you to reflect um, after, during this talk or after on what some of your fears are as, um, as a senior pet owner, um, or if you've been one previously or anticipate it in the future, what might those fears be? Um, and mine got in the way of me giving Moby the best dental care possible. So I bring this up to say, we are all human. Um, it doesn't matter if I have my degree in veterinary technology, I still have fears that make me do some irrational things. Um, what I can do is recognize them, care about it, and, um, and do better next time. So the last time Moby went for a dental cleaning, he ended up having a handful of teeth removed. It has not impacted his ability to eat hard kibble, um, but it could have been a lot more serious. It could have, the disease could have gotten down into his jaw and, um, and I would have had, it just would have been a different story, a different talk that I was giving today. Um, the, vet, the veterinarian did say that if I ever smell that really icky smell coming from his mouth again, to take him back in because that's a sign that we may need to um, remove more teeth. So I have an appointment scheduled for Monday and we'll be seeing our amazing veterinarian, Dr. Z. Um, a couple, I'm just checking the time, um, a couple of other, um, be some uh, behaviors to keep an eye out for in relation to some of these conditions and diseases. Um, I'm kind of working my, my way from the bottom to the top. With any, any arthritis or, or um, you know, joint issues, Keep an eye out for um, an increased difficulty getting from this sitting to standing position or standing to lying down. And this is both cats and dogs. Um, keep, keep an eye on decreases in jumping. So if your dogs are or cats are allowed on the couch um, or on the bed, uh, try and keep that observant nature, that curiosity, and notice when things start to change. Um, in addition, uh, you might notice things such as, like my dog Moby, who used to lift his leg to urinate, 
um, no longer does that. He squats and um, and sometimes nowadays he actually almost just stands and and um, in order to urinate. Uh, trying to think. Also, um, something in terms of that uh, joint, the joint issues and um, the muscle weakness in the back. Um, you may notice that there's some irritability on the animal's part when you're petting them, um, especially sensitivity towards their back, um, towards the rear end. Um, and Moby, because of that, is on a uh, on a medication called carprofen, which is basically an anti-inflammatory um, medicine. Um, in terms of kidney disease, this is a huge one in cats, and um, we often just, I, I see old cats and I think kidney disease. Um, and, you know, some of the signs that you would see would be um, excessive drinking, um, excessive urination, and uh, and so I will just just keep that in mind. Um, and I'm, I'm jumping to cancer. I'm just keeping an eye on the time, but I will. I do invite you to ask some questions so that our expert panelists can help um, with cancer. Keep an eye out um, for lumps and bumps, and these can certainly be benign. You may have heard of lipomas. Um, Moby and Jax, both of uh, both of them had or have lipomas, which are really benign fatty tumors um, on the body. So one thing I recommend is um, if you're not already doing a daily kind of thorough petting of your animal, um, start doing that because that. I find things pretty much in a heartbeat if they change from, from a Monday to a Tuesday. Um, I have found multiple lumps and bumps. I find, um, I usually get a little bit over concerned um, because I think, I think of all of the things that, th that it could be. And the benefit is that I am able to catch things early. When I do that, I can take that information to my veterinary health care team and let them know my concern. Um, I happen to express Moby's anal glands myself because that's something that I know how to do. Um, so when I do that, I also keep an eye out for anything abnormal that I might may find on rectal examination. That's something that your um, veterinary technicians and veterinary um, team will be able to help help with um, some things. You know, in thinking about cancer, um, any hard lumps and bumps, definitely keep an eye out on for those um, changes in skin coloration, unpleasant odors. Um, Stores that aren't healing or abnormal discharge, all of these warrant um, a checkup with your vet. Um, with your vet. Okay, I'm gonna uh, make sure to leave at least ten minutes for questions. Um, but I get to um, talk about one of my favorite things because it is something that um, that. Our um, senior pets go through so frequently, and and I I didn't really hear it talked about very much. It was always just oh that dog's old um, or that cat is old, and um, and that's cognitive dysfunction syndrome um, or simply cognitive dysfunction, dementia. Um, and it's very similar to what we see in human beings. There is um, 
there are cognitive changes that happen in the brains of our, our pets and their behavior changes. I want to be aware of this and keep track of it so that I can make my home as safe and comfortable for my animal as I would for um, a parent or a grandparent that was staying in the house with a similar condition. Um, and then we'll touch on hearing and vision loss, another very common, um, not necessarily disease, um, but a common thing to happen as we age and as our pets age. So um, a, I gave the example of, of Moby barking in the middle of the night. And um, that is a, certainly a one, one sign, disorientation. So um, another example would be, you know, suddenly finding your dog in the living room, um, just staring into space and um, and no one's actually in the living room. And and, you know, that your dog usually sticks with, you know, hangs out with wherever people are um, sometimes. So there's that staring into space, seeming to be lost, um, sometimes getting stuck behind doors. Um, these are all things that that you may experience with a senior pet that is um, experiencing cognitive decline. Um, I'll, I'll go into um, a few other ones in a little bit, but I do want to touch on hearing and vision loss. This is something that ha can happen so gradually that we almost, it's easy as owners to to miss it until there's the aha moment of, oh my gosh, my dog or cat, they really don't hear me. Um, some of the clues is, you know, if I, if I give my pet, my dog usually a command to sit and they don't do it, um, then that's one, you know, one, uh, one kind of signal. It's also a really a, a good reason why it's helpful to use hand commands from a young age in preparation for that day in the in the future when your dog may no longer have the same kind of hearing that they once had. Um, you, you may find that your dog isn't disturbed by loud sounds or doesn't come when they're called um doesn't you know seems to sleep very heavily for example i enter the bedroom and if moby is sleeping even if i'm making a lot of noise he doesn't open his eyes if i make a high pitched sound however he'll open his eyes so he has some hearing but it certainly has declined a lot um in terms of vision loss, some of these signs to watch out for might be um, some increased trouble locating toys, um, hesitancy when jumping off the furniture. Um, I know with some of my cats in the past, it was, you know, that jumping, what they used to seem like uh, Spider-Man and then it became, okay, they need to jump from point A to point B to point C to finally get to the ground. Um, let's see. Okay, I am coming up to some final, um, final items to discuss. Behavioral changes. Um, Keep an eye on these and, you know, most of them are very normal. Um, however, they can be, um, they can be frustrating. They can be anxiety inducing and, um, and they're always good things to talk about with your, with your vet. 
So things like decreased socialization, um, restlessness, pacing, um, vocalizing excessively or abnormally during the night, um, one that I've mentioned, house soiling. And one of one thing that this has to do with is actually the learning ability in our senior pets. Um, some things that that you think, well, they learned that years ago. They're going to know how to do that until the very end. They may forget that, you know, going potty is supposed to be done outside. And that is, um, has to do with their change, their, their brain changes. Um, activity changes um, are certainly, no, can be noticeable. And things like um, licking, pacing, circling, um, and an, a general increase in anxiety. This could be seen um, by your pet following you from one room to the next, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, so all things that um, I know I have seen and um, aren't necessarily abnormal, but it's always good to have that physical exam done so that if there are any things that are that are being caused by a medical condition, um, we can try and nip that in the butt and um, and also come up with some solutions for things like anxiety, whether it's a um, whether it's pheromones or um, you know, there may be medications, um, a more holistic approach to um, to caring for your pets. Quick time check. Okay, so some, some great modifications to keep in mind for your senior pets. Um, first of all, I would say when you get home today, or if you're already at home and you haven't done this already, get down on your hands and knees if it is safe for you to do so and and walk throughout your house your apartment your wherever your space is and see it through your animal's eyes look for those spots that may not be as easy to navigate for a senior pet um so i'll get to flooring in just a moment, but um, one thing for safety and comfort is always have a safe space, kind of a sanctuary available for, for your senior animal. Um, this is a way for them to escape from noises, whether it's friends who are visiting, whether it's other animals in the household, kids, you name it, or in our case, the puppy that we that we got maybe a little um, maybe a little poor timing in uh, when we got the the puppy and Moby's cognitive decline, but we have a safe space for him, and I make sure that he has access to that so that he can go there and be have peace and quiet and very little anxiety. For those of you who have um, hardwood or tile or vinyl um, flooring, um, carpets and non-slip runners are essential. Um, the, you know, senior dogs are already having trouble with, oftentimes with their muscles and the decreased strength in their legs. And we don't need to give them more challenges. So a um, adding runners is is extremely helpful. I actually just ordered some paw grips from some little socks from Amazon. So um, they should arrive today, and I'll update anyone who wants to know how those turn out, or if you've used them with your pets. I'd love to know because I love. The fact that we've removed our carpet and put in um, plank flooring 
but I also realize that now we've had to cover most of it in carpets for the safety of our pets. Uh, keep in mind just access to problem areas in the house that aren't safe for your animals, whether it's um, stairs that don't have a solid side where a pet could slip, slip off, um, consider rails, things like that. Um, you use baby gates or pet gates. Um, I We have a bunch and not just because we have a puppy. Um, we use them all the time. Also check outside areas. Window wells can be a real danger for our senior pets if they're not covered properly. And um, I bring up weeds that have those sharp stickers because that's something we deal with out here in Colorado. And um, if those are growing and and they get caught in the paw of whether it's a cat or a dog, most of the time the cats are pretty good at just picking them out and throwing them away. Um, but for Moby, who was a city dog turned country dog, he's not so good at picking picking the stickers. And I'll see him hobbling on three legs and I have to go and do it for him. So instead, I can keep an eye on the weeds in my in my outdoor areas. Couple of pictures to show you booties for when it's cold, when it's extra hot, um, and non-slip ones in addition to that. And then a baby gate, which is easy to um, ensure that that the senior animal has peace and quiet. I do want to give you a quick look at our doggy door situation because this is um, a big um, kind of, it's weighing on my mind. Um, so this is the, the first picture is how the dogs get out of the house and they go into the garage and then there's, that's how they, they go down these rickety wooden steps into the garage and then out from the garage into the dog run. As you can see, we have not put millions of dollars into the, these building scenarios. Um, so on our to-do list is a couple of things. One, to reinforce these steps so that there's no fear of any paws slipping through or falling off the sides. In fact, I'd love to put a ramp there. Also, the metal that you see here is a very slippery surface. This needs to change um, because what happens is Moby gets scared of going into the house and that adds can add to the barking. Um, this third picture, you'll see that there's actually quite, you know, quite a few inches to climb in back into the doggy door to get inside. Um, and that may be fine for a one-year-old or a five-year-old animal. It's not okay for um, a 14-year-old one who has some mobility issues. A couple of other um, modifications to keep in mind. Um, food and water bowls with non-slip bottoms, litter boxes with ramps. I love this one for our senior kitties or just making sure they have lower than normal sides. Um, also a centralized location. I love this one for, um, for food, for toys, for a litter box. I'm thinking of cats specifically here. So that there doesn't have to be, if their movement is limited, they don't have to um, go very far to access those primary needs um, of food and litter and toys, I, I count as a primary need. Um, we talked about ramps, or that was mentioned. So. Moby, one of his favorite things is lying on, on the one couch he's allowed on. 
So I thought it was a great idea to buy him this special staircase for um, senior pets to help him up onto the couch. Well, of course, he never used it and he jumped over it. Um, and as a result, it became kind of a plaything for our new puppy. Um, she just thought it was the neatest thing. And I must also admit that our three little nephews also used it as a plaything. So it's gotten its use, um, but sometimes the best laid plans just don't work. And we need to get creative. And um, maybe Moby will want to use that in another few months. So don't give up, stay creative, stay observant. Okay, and um, in terms of the emotional well-being, gosh, I realized this could have, I could have talked for a lot longer. Um, I really want to focus on the four budgets. And this is the, um, if you're familiar with Lap of Love, they are a wonderful um, end-of-life uh care company. They do in-home euthanasias. They have support groups. They will, they have amazing resources on their website to assist you with quality of life assessments. Um, but one thing that, that I heard in a webinar from them recently was something that it, it's been around for a while, but it's important to consider our own quality of life as caregivers for senior pets, um, and in addition to that of our senior pets. So while I'm looking at my dog or my cat's, um, you know, ability to eat, to drink, to to urinate, defecate, play, um, sleep, are they? How much pain are they in? those types of, of quality life considerations. I'm also looking at that of the family and of the caregiver. And those four budgets, if you will, are finances. So how much money am I able to spend on my, on my senior animal? I would love to install a, um, a, an amazing ramp system in my house um, how much money and is that a, is that a realistic? Um, because a lot of the finances are going towards veterinary bills, um, perhaps special prescription uh, foods, uh, medications, et cetera. Time, what is, um, how much time is taken to caring for my, for my senior pet. I'm certainly spending all of my time loving loving the, that pet, but am, do I need to leave work to go home and give medications three times a day? Um, you know, is it, uh, I'm trying, you know, I'm thinking of going to pick up medications. I I live out in the country about an hour from, from the main city and so it would take a lot of time to um to get basic necessities um physical considerations for for us as humans um you know as we age it's going to get harder to to help our our senior pets um you know if if i have if i'm if I have a hard time lifting a 60 pound dog into the car, um, that's something I need to keep in mind. And who's in my social support network? Um, and as I get older and older, that social support network may change and may get smaller. And finally, emotional. Um, you know, this, what else is going on in in your life as a as a caregiver? Um, do you have a lot of sick family members? Do you have um, a lot of emotional demands on your on your time? And you know, I heard that from Lap of Love, they said um, 
Dr. Mary Gardner, one of the founders said, whenever one of her clients says that, that one of these budgets has just run out, that's when she, she says, you know, euthanasia, she, she brings that up, no judgment because the quality of life of the animal is so closely intertwined with the quality of life of the family of the human. Um, a resource to check out the five freedoms. Um, you know, if thieves are missing from the animal's life, that's, you know, that says something to me about, about their quality of life. And um, in wrapping up, you know, I just want to give um, give appreciation for those who are going through anticipatory grief. Um, perhaps your your pet, um, you know that they they are at their end of life walk. I love that terminology. I I learned that from um, Colleen Ellis and Two Hearts Pet Loss. Um, qu their quality of life assessments bucket lists, things that we can do to help prepare ourselves um, for this special end of life um, time. Um, and I'd love to encourage you to, to reflect, you know, what, what after my, my pet, my beloved pet is gone, what do I want to look back on and have done with them? What do I think they would really enjoy? Um, and keep those in the in the front of your mind and plan for that now, especially if you've still got active active animals, plan for it. Bring it up with your veterinarian if they don't bring it up to you. Um, and also know that there are many support systems out there, including things like um, pet hospice groups. Do a Google search or contact me. I'm happy to help you. So a few resources that I'm also happy to share more of, but I want to get to questions. And also please feel free to contact me at any time. So what questions do you all have? Thank you so much for your time, for, for listening. And I hope that I, okay, I see a couple of hands raised. Rebecca, you might uh, stop sharing the screen oh, just so sure. people can see the Q&A button more easily. You bet. Thank you for that tip. So I see a hand up, Martha. Talking is permitted, so let me unmute you. Okay, go well, for I just, it. All I wanted to say was that the chat was disabled this whole time, so maybe you, I'm just letting oh. you know the chat was disabled. The oh, Q and A so button, much. but the Q and A button is available, but I didn't know that. So I'm just telling you, other people might have the same issue that I had. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so, and, but I do have a question, Rebecca. Yeah. Um, I have like I have a dog that is around seven ish years old, and we did have another pet before this that, in the middle of the night, really got up and like literally seemed to go blind overnight. Um, mm -hmm. But how like how would you suggest we start training? this dog to start using a ramp like do you should we start now because like the other dog was af i think afraid of the ramp one because she couldn't really see it but or he couldn't see it but mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that is such a good question and um one that you are not alone it's um you know i think it's wise to train our pets or at least to get them familiar with all types of, um, you know, not just stairs, but those ramps and 
be thinking ahead to the future. So I I don't think it's ever too early to introduce them to to the concept of a ramp, even if it's you know a plank that you put in and um, no sharp nails, but you know having having a a board that they can practice walking up and down. So that, and I would certainly, if they are food motivated, encourage treats um, to take away any fear um, and also just to uh, help help encourage your pet to see that as something that's normal. It's not something to be scared of. Yeah, I'm thinking I need to start now. <laughs> if that's your gut, trust your gut. She's too big to pick up. <laughs> yeah, that and that's where the ramps come in so helpful. Thank you. This thank is you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so I have a question in the chat. Um, I have two senior dogs. One turns 15 tomorrow. Congratulations and happy birthday. Um, and I am leery of flea and tick meds since I have heard they can be dangerous for older dogs. What do you think about ticks? Do you use meds or homeopathic methods? Um, I have some of that, but not sure if it is effective. I see Jamie is typing an answer, and I also um, certainly invite, um, let's see, do we have, I'm not sure if Virginia is still Dr. able Corrigan to Dr. Corrigan had another meeting, so she stepped Oh, away. sorry, I see we are, we are, at the at the hour. Um, so I'll let Jamie answer that. Um, personally, I do do research on whatever area I'm living in. We, here in Colorado, we get very few ticks. So I don't um, I'm not worried about ticks, although I'm more worried about some of the grass ons. So I'm I check my dogs physically run my hand through their coat every time they that we come back inside or at the end of the day. Um, I do use a flea and tick medication because it was um, more rainy here than usual this year. And, um, and so I was concerned about um, West Nile virus. Um, so for, for us, it really it kind of depends on the um, the location, how humid it's been. Um, but I I am a proponent of flea and tick flea medication at least. Um, but I will wait to see what what Jamie has to say on that one. So thanks for addressing that, Jamie. Well, I. Um, I want to respect everyone's time and I realize I've already gone over. Thank you um, so much for, for joining us today. And if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. You know Mary Beth. Um, hopefully you can find me if you need to send me an email um, and we'd be happy to continue the conversation and get you any answers. Um, but go love on your pets, whether they are senior, middle-aged, teenagers, or, or babies. Love on them, and happy birthday to your 15-year-old tomorrow. Thanks, everyone.